So I just want to continue with the worship and continue with the praise. And all the songs that have been said, the last song that was sung when it talked about the cross, and I looked over there at that cross, and I just pictured myself right there. And then when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me and all that he's done for you, and right now, God, I just want to just love you and just bless you, oh God. And God, as we're standing right now, Father, Lord, we make it personal. Oh God, we thank you for what you have done for us, what you did for me on that cross, oh God. Thank you for your goodness and thank you for your mercy, oh God. Lord, right now we ask, Lord, that you will continue to have your way in us and through us, God. We worship you, oh God. Let's give him the highest praise. The highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. For when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, all oh, my soul rejoices. I say hallelujah. And all that's going on, oh God, in this world, we abide in you and you abide in us. God, we thank you that we are the children of God. And we can boldly declare, we can boldly say, oh God, that you, oh God, you are wonderful, you are great. And we adore you and we love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Amen, amen. You can be seated. Glory to God. I just thank God for this opportunity. Amen. Thank God for this opportunity. And it was just on last, last week when Pastor Bob came to me and he shared that I would be sharing the word. And on last month, I was just saying, Lord, I want to share with the church family. What would you have? What would you have? And the Lord has placed this word of rest in my spirit. And I just want to go ahead and just share that with the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Glory to God. How great thou art. It is well with my soul. And those songs, to me, how they bless me of just resting in our God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The foundational text will be taken from Matthew chapter 11, beginning at verse 28. And while he is putting that on the board, I just want to share this. A biblical rest is an attitude of heart that feels so sheltered in God's love that it does not allow itself to be pulled into a place of strife in order to obtain God's approval. Rest is a place where mankind will be drawn to us because everyone is searching for rest. One of the meanings of rest is to refresh one's self, to recover in strength. Now, there's a number of passages in the New Testament talking about entering into the rest of God. But when I looked at the Greek definition for rest, it says to cease, to be refreshed, to settle down and to abide. And in doing so, that's going to cause your, not only your physical, but your spiritual to be rejuvenated and put you in a place of peace. Again, these, the, the songs that, that we sung this morning, those songs in my spirit, it just felt like that, that rest of just sometime, you know, when everything is so chaotic going on in the world, we turn on the radio, we turn on the television, we see those things. But as a people of God, we know 
in whom we can go to. We abide in him. And he promised, as we read here in Matthew 11 and 28, it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 29, I will ease, take my yoke upon me, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. I'm going to go ahead and read from the Amplified Version, if you can put that up there, I'm sorry. But it says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, overburden and I will cause you to rest that word cause there's a reason for action it says I will cause you to rest and then the effect of it will be I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest. That effect will cause relief, ease, and refreshment, and recreation, and a blessed quiet for your souls. For my yoke is wholesome, Useful is good, not harsh, hard, sharp, or pressing, but is comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be borne. You know, in this world, the scripture lets us know that there are going to be trials and there's going to be tribulation. And we see the, the end of times. We see those things being done right now. But this is just the beginning of sorrows. Just the beginning. But with the word of God and being able to find that rest, find that out of all that busyness that sometimes we, we get, just to be at the feet of Jesus. Just find that quiet time. Take that 30 minutes, take that hour, and just rest in God. And when we rest in him, our souls are being refreshed. They're being rejuvenated. With everything that might be going on on the outside, I'm resting in God. And as I'm resting in God, I can hear him. He's speaking to us and he's sharing. And he makes it it's much more easier to hear from God when our souls are calm. We're resting in him in spite of what all that might be going on. Because you know one thing, there's always going to be something. I don't care. There's always going to be something. It might be finances. It might be health. It might be children. It might be work. It's always going to be something. But the blessedness of it is, is that he said that in this world, we're going to have the trials. We're going to have the tribulations. But I want you as a people, my children, to be encouraged that we can find that resting place in him. But we got to take that time. And that's what he was dealing with me with. Rest, Doris, rest. Just as I need the physical, as the job gets demanding, your spirit also needs that rest. Take that time. And it's like, for some reason, whether it be 2.45 a.m., sometime it would be 3 a.m., it's like I'm just waking up. And I'm being honest with you, my body's like, no, just a little bit more, 15 more minutes of sleep or that sort. But then it just seemed like it just kept happening and kept happening until the point I said, Lord, I believe you want me 
just to get up. And in doing so, getting up, and I'm saying, Father, I'm here, but I'm so sleepy right now. But nonetheless, just be quiet. Just rest. And just let me embrace you. And in such a feeling of peacefulness and just joy and love. And then being strengthened. And then when I get to work, it's like it's chaotic. But then I remember, remember that time that I had with the Father. And it's just that walking in the strength of God. So sometimes those early mornings, they make a difference. They do indeed. Amen? Amen. Rest is a foundational truth of God's kingdom. A place of surrender and submission that creates an atmosphere for faith to grow. It cannot grow in an atmosphere of restlessness. If you're, so much is going on and you just feel restless and you're wondering why. Restlessness and faith cannot coexist because they work against each other. Restlessness is rooted in insecurity and fear. And that's just what the enemy would want for those distractions. He's going to throw those distractions. But thank God for his word. He said, I'll have you not to be ignorant of the devices in which the enemy will use. And we know that if we just seek God, call on his name, take that time and go to the Father, he will reveal, he will show us. It says without rest you eventually become worn out, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. And that's what Satan wants. He wants us to get to that place that we're so upbeat to the point that we're doing this, we're here, we're there. We're doing so much activities, so much activities, until we can't or we run out of that time and we don't take time to be with the Lord. But we won't be ignorant to the devices in which he uses. But instead, we're going to see ourselves resting in the Heavenly Father's embrace. From the position of being God's beloved child, Jesus invites you into the same relationship with his Father that he enjoyed. The only place you cease from scribing is through entering into that kind of love relationship that the Father's Son shared. We can look at John 5, 19 through 20 in the Amplified, if we could, please. It says, the secret of Jesus' life and ministry was the rest he found in his Father's love. The son can do nothing of himself unless it's sometime, unless it is something he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, these things the son also does in like manner. For the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself is doing, and greater works than these will he show him that you marvel. John 5, 19 says, So Jesus answered them by saying, I assure you, most solemnly, I tell you the Son is able to do nothing of himself, of his own accord, but he is able to do only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does is what the Son does in the same way in his turn. 20, the father dearly loves the son and discloses to, shows him everything that he himself does. And he will disclose to him, let him see greater things yet than these, so that you may marvel and be full of the wonder and astonishment. And in resting with God, Resting in his presence. Not, Lord, I need this, or Lord, I want this, but just sometimes just resting and just being still, being quiet, and allowing the spirit just to speak to you, speak to your spirit. 
resting in him. And then he begins to share, reveal things, and that we are able to just to go out and do what God is calling us to do through the spirit of God. Because we have rested our spirits, we've rested, and we can hear him clearly. Amen? Amen. Praise God. It says that God is waiting on us. He's waiting on you to be at rest in him so that he can pour out his compassion on us and reveal his kingdom. In Philippians 4, 6 through 7, it says to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, to let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Resting, resting, resting. Amen? Resting in the Lord. To be anxious for nothing, when I think about that, being anxious for absolutely nothing. Whatever it is that's going on, whether it's the finances, the children, the family, but he said to be anxious for nothing. So if he says to be anxious for nothing, then there we are. We're just entrusting God in his word. Amen. He has a plan. Isaiah chapter 30, and beginning at verse 15 and 18, 15 through 18. Isaiah 30, and here we find children that were being rebellious. And they wanted to do it their way. They had their plan as far as doing things. The 15th verse, it says, For thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning to me and resting in me, you shall be saved in quietness and trusting confidence shall be your strength shall be your strength the joy of the lord is our strength taking that time to just be in the presence of god we are being again rejuvenated we're finding that peace in god and God is strengthening us for whatever it is that might be going on or might come up in one's life. It says, but you would not. And you said, no, we will speed our own course. I want to go ahead and I want to do it my way. I want to go ahead and take matters into my own hand. It says, therefore, you will speed in flight from your enemies. You said... We will ride upon swift steeds, doing our own way. Therefore, will they who pursue you be swift, so swift, that 1,000 of you will flee at the threat of one of them, and the threat of five you will flee, till you are left like a beacon or a flagpole on the top of a mountain, and like a signal on a hill. And therefore, the Lord earnestly waits, expecting, looking, and longing to be gracious to you. And therefore, he lifts himself up that he may have mercy on you and show loving kindness to you. For the Lord is a God of justice, Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied, 
are all those who earnestly wait for him, who expect and look and long for him, for his victory, his favor, his love, his peace, his joy, and his matchless, unbroken companionship. All of that is found in just resting in our God. All of that, the victory, the favor, the love, and the peace, the joy, matchless, unbroken companionship. That is, yes, bless God. So when these distractions come, and like I said, they're going to come. There's always going to be something. But I have found that when that happens, maybe it's a time just to find that quiet place, that quiet moment, that could very well be that one moment where we just rest in God. Stand still, see the salvation of the Lord, and let him replenish, let him rejuvenate. This church is not an ordinary church. It is not an ordinary church. As a brother has shared, and as I've seen what God is doing through this body of Christ, and thank God for our Pastor Bob, who gives us the opportunity and the teaching to be able to, as he prepares, as we go out and to be a witness for Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. But I pray that what I have shared this morning encourages the body of Christ, that we just rest in our Lord. And listen diligently to what he's sharing, what he's, he's speaking, what he's saying to us. So that he, we can be renewed and be strengthened just to go forth in the power of his might. Because what we just read in Isaiah and 30, they said, well, we see where they wanted to do it their way. But a lot of times if we're trying to do it our way, it can be exhausting. But when we just rest in God and listen for his voice and let him do the work that we don't have to scribe, that Pastor Bob shares sometimes, we don't have to scribe, but just let him work through it. That we are being fortified even the more to carry out what God is wanting us to carry out. Bless God. Bless God. Amen. I pray that you have been encouraged by the word. Amen. 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 Thank you, Doris. Wow, that was refreshing. You know, <clears throat> the scripture put on the, on the board up there, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Sometimes you see people working, but they're working in a rest. And that, that's what we need to do. We don't need to be all anxious and, and fretting and worrying about this. Because, uh, you know, being a Christian, if you die, that ain't too bad. <laughs> I mean, you, you're going to end up in his presence for sure. <laughs> so even death, we don't have to fear. But listen, I want to encourage, and that's what Doris has done today. She has encouraged all of us to rest as we work. Uh, there's a scripture in Hebrews, I can't remember right now, but it says, it says, um, <clears throat> Strive to enter your rest. <laughs> so God wants us to work in a rest and be in a rest and be in a rest with, with one another. I don't have to impress you. You don't have to impress me. We have to love one another. And that's not hard after God does that work in you because that's about all you can do is just love people. And I learned this from Susan years ago. Love the person, but some of their deeds, you know, you don't have to like, but love the person. 
Look what it says. Therefore, my beloved, this is Paul encouraging the Corinthians and us, brethren, be firm, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, always being superior, excellent, doing more than enough in the service of the Lord. But he wants us to do that in his rest, knowing and being comp continuously aware that your labor in the Lord is not futile. It is never wasted or to no purpose. So all of us are doing something uh, in the body of Christ and in our homes and our families. So I like that scripture in Philippians. Don't worry about anything. Don't be anxious about anything. Pray about everything. Make your request known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, shall keep your heart and your mind at rest as you trust in the Lord. Let's bow our heads now. There may be some things you're going through right now. You're fretting about it. You're worried about it. We understand all of that. We've all been through that. But the Bible says, cast all your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Father, I ask that your peace right now, that we would be able to receive your peace, that our minds would not be so wrapped up with what we are doing or in the world's affairs that we cannot rest in you. Father, by faith, we receive that rest, your rest, Lord, into our souls. Because, Lord, by doing that, we're going to prevent a lot of sickness down the road in our life. We forgive. We forgive those that have trespassed against us, Lord. Even the doctors today are finding out that unforgiveness brings so much anxiety and sickness to the body and to our lives. So, Lord, we rest in Thee. And in that rest, there's healing. In that rest, there is refreshing. In Your rest, Lord, there is peace and joy. Father, help us all to enter into that rest in these last days. For we see what is on the horizon. Many things, Lord. Many things that are destroying homes, destroying people's lives. People are just going off the deep end, shooting people. Sicknesses, diseases. Right now in the United States, Lice is spread. 48 states, people are re getting lice. This is, this is definitely a, a beginning of some things that we know, what we call the tribulation years. So, Lord, your rest. I speak rest to your people. Anxiety goes. Worry goes. Rejection goes. Unforgiveness goes. In Jesus' name. And I minister strength and power and rest to your people. And we want to thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. we got just a little bit time, more time here. Somebody want to just share what you felt that as you came to church today, that you received something, that something has happened uh, in your life through the message or the Sunday school or the praise service when they were singing. Do, do you feel like God has done something in your life today or do you feel like you're the same old same old you, you haven't changed a bit all right come on up and share with us young lady we need to hear what god is doing in people's lives okay what you got well i'm new here you some of you don't know me i just moved here a couple months ago from um montana originally from portland oregon and i felt god um, moving me here. I have a son that I haven't spent much years. They need to know the Lord, so I'm trusting the Lord to use me. Anyway, I had this maybe unrealistic idea that God had a um, job waiting for me the moment I got here. Well, that hasn't turned out to be that way. 
And so I said, Lord, what am I, what am I going to do? Because I am one of these people who want their ducks in a row. And so, and I like to be prepared and stuff. So this has been my challenge, is waiting for a job. So sister, that's what I needed, resting in the Lord, not being anxious, um, leaving it to the Lord. I said, Lord, I can't, I didn't get that job. You must have something better for me. So um, that has been, I really feel, is my lesson while I'm here, to wait on the Lord, not to be anxious, to, um, and you know, not, and I got this little bit of savings, and I'm hoping, Lord, I really don't want to get to the end of that, <laughs> but maybe it will. But you know what? I've been blessed all the same. Amen. I have been enjoying my little three-year-old grandson like the Lord only knows. Amen. And grandmas do, <laughs> grandparents. So, um, and he, he led me to this church. Amen. Praise God. I was out driving around with my little grandson one day just for fun, and I would just say, where do you want to go? And he'd lead me. He'd say this way because he can't. He has a speech problem, and um, he just, you know. And he brought me back here of all places. I would have never found this place. And I looked at that and I said, "That looks interesting." And so I looked it up in my, um, my on my phone, and I said, "Hmm, I'm going to try this out." And I'm going to tell you, it's fed my soul. It's what I wanted. One of the things that was when Montana is, I had. So I went to some good churches, but they weren't feeding me. I needed more than Jesus loves me this. I know. I need some instruction. I need some. And I'm t I've loved the moment I came in here. I said, Lord, this is where I'm going to be. <laughs> you know? And so um, I really feel like the Lord has really, in the few weeks that I've just been coming here, has helped me to grow. So I, sister, I really thank you for that message. Is right. It was for me, if nobody else. So thank you. Amen. Well, thank you so much. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Anybody else want to share? All right, Linda. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I was in Sunday school this morning and got a text message that kind of rocked my world. Um, so I know that I need to depend upon God because all things work together for those who love the Lord. Um, and I know the situation's going to work out. I'm, I don't see it right now with my physical eyes, but with my spiritual eyes, I see it and I'm going to rest and let God do the work in the situation because I know he knows best in every situation and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> But I know in the end it's going to work out. Amen. Praise God. And that's faith in operation. Put uh, Romans 8.28 up there. Romans 8.28. We are assured, I love that, and know that God is being a partner in their, our, their labor. All things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God. Anybody here love God? Yeah, okay. And are called according to his design and purpose. So remember that scripture. It's, it's working for good. And I, I, I mean, I'm 83 year, years old, and Susan and me have been through every crisis. You name it, we've gone through it at least a couple of dozen times. <laughs> but... We trusted God in all of it, and he has called good to, caused good to come out of it. Eddie, did you get your place to live? Not yet? All right. Let's all touch and agree. Father, I thank you that Eddie is going to find that place for his family to live. I thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. All right. Anybody else want to share? I got another a little bit. Okay, Phil, come on. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, just um, again, Sister, on what you were sharing you know, about resting in the Lord and trusting in Him is that um, how that spoke to me this morning is, you know, we were, uh, as I think most, some of you know, we were in on vacation in France for three weeks and uh, 
you know, if you just turn on the news, you know there's trouble there. There's trouble in most of Europe right now. And it's just a very troubled place. But we were, we were blessed with a wonderful time with uh, Elen's family. And we, most of her family does not know the Lord. Um, or they may know the Lord from a distance. Or they may say they believe in God. But, okay, and it's an intellectual battle ground for them, for most of the, of the people living in Europe. We had a conversation at one time with this brilliant young man who was very, very smart, very educated, um, a geo geologist, engineer, worked for a big oil company, very educated, and, and it was interesting because he was open and um, to discussing spiritual matters. He was actually open, asking questions and so forth. And so it was encouraging to us to share with him, and as I watched uh, our sons, uh, Jeremy especially, and, and Christopher, share their faith with him and engage in this discussion, but it finally got to the point where I realized that unfortunately it stayed on that intellectual level. It's, as I'm sure some of you have experienced, people will, will talk to you and you think you're making some headway there uh, in sharing your faith and bringing, perhaps bringing them to the Lord, planting some seeds in people when you finally come to the realization that it's just platonic, it's just an intellectual, isn't this interesting kind of conversation. But I'm resting in the belief that we were able to plant some seeds. Yes. We were able to plant some seeds. The fact that we were sharing from our hearts, sharing our faith, and, you know, he asked me, a, at, at, we got to a point in the discussion where he, he asked me the question. He says, so is your faith really rational? <laughs> because that's the number one thing in, in a land where the people worship the mind, yeah. man, intellectualism, how man is above everything, right? Mm -hmm. So he asked, is your faith rational? And I said to him, no, it's not. Because I can sit there all day and trying to explain to him black and white why the Bible is true, why it makes sense, why all the prophecies about the Lord Jesus Christ came true, till I'm blue in the face. And that's rationalizing, that's rational thought. But in the end, none of that matters because it's a matter of the heart. And until the Spirit leads him, draws him to the Lord, ain't nothing going to happen. It's all going to stay on a, on a spiritual level. So anyway, that's a long story. Just to, And I could talk more, but I'm, I'm going to stop there. <clears throat> just to say that you know, it's to rest in the Lord knowing that we've been able to plant some seeds. We have stirred some thoughts. Um, and the land's been able to uh, continue a, a similar conversation with her brother. And that we hope and pray that um, the Lord will soften that heart through his spirit and allow the seeds that we were able to plant um, to grab hold and bring to fruition. Mm -hmm. uh, but that whole land just needs a lot of prayer. And it's also resting in knowing that our youngest son is still there and traveling around uh, when there's all this stuff going on. Uh, and it's resting in knowing that, hey, he's under the blood. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we just trust in the Lord that you know, the, the Lord is protecting him and watching him and even working through him and blessing yes. other people Amen. as he travels. Amen. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Amen. <clears throat>
You know, the Bible says that God takes the simple things to confound the wise. When you read the scriptures about when God heals people, how would you, you know, you got eye trouble. All right, I'll get you in just a little bit. You got eye trouble. Now, this don't seem to be very uh, pleasant to think about, but, you know, Jesus took dirt and spit in it and put it in the, in the man's eyes. That's not rational, is it? I mean, that's, what is that? <laughs> that don't make sense. <laughs> or the guy that's got the withered arm, stretch it forth. You don't understand, I got a withered arm right here. <laughs> stretch it forth. <laughs> it gets healed, you know. I mean, all you see, all of that, you know, uh, go around Jericho seven times. Just march around seven times, once every day, you know. Seven, and then on, then on the seventh day, do it seven times, and, and poof, the, the walls fall down. That don't make sense. It ain't sense. It's faith. And God gives us that faith when our heart meets his, that condition. And on and on and on, you read, uh, you know, go down to the river and dip seven times. The Jordan River, you know, it's not so clean, I think. You know, back in Syria, hand to hand out here, we got clean water out here. But go down to the river, uh, well, I'll just dip six times. No, seven times. On and on through the scriptures, you'll see that God takes the simple things to confound the wise. What you got, son? Am I allowed to encourage Phil? Phil? Yeah, encourage Phil. Um, I was looking up a scripture that applies to your situation. First uh, Corinthians fifteen forty four through uh, forty six. It is it is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body. There is also a spiritual body. Thus it is, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last man, Adam, became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural, and then the spiritual. So that intellectual man is a natural man. In first, all discussions will be natural, intellectual. The word also says that God's word shall not return void. You can totally rest in that. You don't even have to worry about it. You know, the, the main thing is allow God to speak through you. And sometimes it's the, even for us who are spiritual, it's the simple things that will confound us that get through to people. Yeah. Thank you very much. The scripture also, like, I appreciate that. Some sow, some water. That's our part. But God gives the increase. So every... Uh, every uh, Time to Susan me go out and we give out tracts and I know you do too. If you're not doing it, I encourage you to do it. It's simple for us. We know what our job is. <laughs> Just sow the word or water the word. The Bible says God watches over his word to perform it. God watches over his word to perform it. So as we sow the word, and somebody else come along and water it, your, your son's over there watering it probably right now, God's going to give the increase. So we can rest in that. See, we can rest in that to know that God is faithful to his word, and he watches over his word to perform it. So our job is to speak it, then he'll watch over it, and he will perform it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you right now for the faith that's been generated here today, the peace that we feel.
the understanding that has come in by the Spirit of God. Yes, Lord. We know, we know that it's shown to us by the Holy Spirit. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has prepared for those that love the Lord. But, but he has showed it to us. How? By his Spirit. And we know that as Phil and um, the family has just sowed the word, we know that you will watch over your word and you will perform it and bring it about. Thank you, Father, that your word is eternal. And when we share the word of God, we are sharing something that's eternal. And we thank you for it now, Lord. In Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's pray and give thanks for the dinner, Father.